Well, Steve, as you well know, using the sun's energy in a more natural way is something farmers, especially rice farmers, have been doing for thousands of years. Rice is the principal food for more than half the world's population. In this country, the growing popularity of ethnic foods is opening many new markets, and rice-growing states like California are meeting that demand. It's bagged, boxed, heat pressured into snack cakes. It's even used for flavoring in the beer you drink. And because of changing tastes, demographics, and health issues, rice consumption in the United States continues to grow. It's a wonderful thing to be able to produce something that uh, you feel like has quality and adds something. Wendell Lundberg's parents began farming this California land way back in 1937. His folks had moved from Nebraska and, seeing the ravages of the Dust Bowl, saw the importance of soil management and crop quality. This is one of the things that we've tried to do. We think that all the places that uh, quality is important, I think our food is where it's the most important. This farm family and the region in which they produce play a major role in rice production in the U.S. California plants a half million acres in rice crops each year. The Golden State, along with Arkansas and areas of the Mississippi Delta and Gulf Coast, will produce almost all of the rice grown in America. Unlike other crops, rice here is seeded from the air. This aeronautical agriculture drops rice seeds into the fields that are soaked in standing water. The heavy seeds sink into furrows and begin to grow. The water then protects the seedlings and acts as a natural herbicide. This allows the rice to compete for nutrients and sunlight. Bryce Lundberg is another member of this multi-generational farm family. The Lundbergs raise a variety of rice products and tailor their planting to each type. It's about 14 days old so the, the seedlings aren't very tall at this time. And what we're looking for in this, in this field right now is to keep the rice covered and to really to keep all the plants covered until we can get a good gauge on how many weeds there are. Right now we're looking for the grass weeds and the rice health. And we want to keep the grass covered and, until we know that, that it is, is drowned. We can drown grass in about 21 days. The rice drowns about 48 hours after that. So we have about a 48 hour Timing window. Is critical. It is, it's critical. Yeah. And so that we continue to monitor it. That standing water in the spring creates an estuary of sorts for thousands of migrating birds. The birds often establish nests in the fields. With the project they call Egg Aid, the Lundbergs move the nests to protected areas. The effort allows the federally protected hatchlings to thrive away from farm production. We come in and make sure we get as many of those eggs as we can. Then we take them down to a facility that hatches them. The rice here is planted in April and May. Certain fields are leveled before flooding. On these plots, specialty and experimental crops will be planted by hand as part of a long-range plan to test and market new varieties. With so many different varieties from which to choose, how do you make decisions as to what you want to try? Well, we have some specific agronomics that we're going for. Um, there's things that make rice competitive, like seedling vigor. Uh, so we're looking for seedling vigor. We're looking for uh, the grain quality, cooking characteristics. And some of these varieties, we're looking for brand color. Uh, there's uh, the most basic would be yield and uh, even its ability to stand up and its straw strength. So there's some, some things that we're looking for that are general to the rice industry, and then there's more things to the specialty market, like the taste and the color, uh, its uniqueness, uh, its aroma, that is maybe more geared towards the specialty market. So in the period of time that you've had this program going, what would you say has been your biggest success? Oh, there's been some fun stuff. This is what, what is so neat and unique about it, is that we can actually find things, and because we have our own business where we can sell our products, I can talk to customers, I can take little samples out, I can show them to people, I can eat things, I can grow things, and they can actually become a product that we can get out to people. Within five months, the seedlings will grow to a height of three feet. Rice is harvested much like corn or wheat as harvesters sweep through the fields. 
A single rice seed can account for about a thousand grains of rice. An average acre of land in one year will produce about 7,000 pounds of rice. In an average year, California alone will produce more than four billion pounds of rice. That rice must be dried before it can be processed. The Lundbergs operate their own processing and storage facilities. These large rice dryers are powered by an array of solar panels. Once dried, a milling process removes the non-edible hulls. From there, it can be left in its natural state as brown rice or undergo further milling, which removes the outer bran layer, leaving the white rice core that most people recognize. Food items like rice cakes can be the next step in production. Or the rice is bagged and shipped to markets at home and abroad. Rice is an important dietary staple, contributing significantly to the nutritional well-being of many. Each of these silos on the Lundberg farm holds two million pounds of rice. You figure you probably can get about uh, seven servings per pound of rice per person, so you're looking at probably seven million people per silo. The U.S. produces less than 5% of the global rice crop, but it's become one of the top five rice exporters in the world. And while rice consumption continues to grow in this country, some 50% of America's rice crop is shipped overseas.